Hey guys, welcome back. Happy, happy Memorial Day. Well, happy, that's something that we always hear. We always were kind of accustomed and uh, used to, we hear it a lot, happy Memorial Day. But is it really a happy Memorial Day? Is it really happy? That's something I want to talk to you about. I think that over the years with uh, our you know, with our culture, our society, celebrating, partying, having fun, consuming, buying stuff on sale, purchasing and, and, and just having a good time. We turned into this memorial, turned this Memorial Day into a day of celebration and day of good times and stuff like that. And we actually kind of lost contact with what this, this day is really all about. It's, it's a Memorial Day. It's a day of remembering the fallen ones, the wounded ones, the people that, you know, uh, dedicated their lives. Some of them gave their lives, were wounded physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and people that are lost are no longer with us. And yet we, we seldom, we, we don't really remember to stop, to stop for a second and, and think about what this day actually means. So, you know, uh, I grew up, I grew up in, uh, in a different country. I grew up in Israel. I served in the military for 18 years. And the way we grew up over there, it, it actually wasn't called uh, Memorial Day. It was called kind of Remembrance, Remembrance Day, which, which you literally, it's 24 hours of, you know, ceremonies in school, in public spaces, you know, in town, uh, in the town hall, there was always like a stage and there were, they would read out the names of the fallen ones and you go uh, in the morning, you go to, uh, to the cemeteries. Literally in school, we all wear uniforms, uh, even blue and white, you know, for the flag, for the Israeli flag. And it's a day of mourning, it's a day of remembrance, a, a day of giving respect to the fallen one, to the, her to the fallen ones, to the heroes. And I think we kind of a little bit lost, we, we lost touch with, you know, with the same thing over here. Uh, like I said already before, with, uh, you know, us being used to, oh, there's a Memorial Day sale and stuff, and let's go to the beach and a whole long weekend of partying, drinking, barbecuing, and we actually don't really remember and we don't really understand sometimes why this holiday is, is what this holiday is all about pretty much. Remember the fallen ones, you know, remember the people that gave their lives, that gave their, you know, all, think of all these, all the families now that were, you know, all the wars, whether you like war. I don't think there's anybody that likes war. Nobody like, likes war. So even you as a pacifist or a person that doesn't like wars, nobody likes wars. Really, nobody likes wars. So for you to be able, for you to be able to think and have your opinion of, I don't like wars, or I don't like this, or I don't, I don't agree with this political uh, group, or I don't believe this group, or whatever. For you to be able to have that freedom of thought, the, th the freedom of speech, the freedom of like having a good life that you're having right now, sitting at the beach, sitting at home in front of your barbecue, sitting in front of your phone, enjoying all this good. There were people, and there are people right now, that are giving their lives their families are dedicating and giving the lives for your freedom, for our freedom. So this is a day we need to literally remember them and, and be thankful for them. So I'm gonna do a pause, a few seconds, for us to stop whatever we're doing and just think about these people that are no longer with us or right now or somewhere else far away or even on our borders or even on the ocean right now, protecting us and you know, devoting their lives and uh, danger endangering their own lives for our freedom. Thank you. And also, next time you see a person, uh, you know, of duty, policeman, military man, coast guard, whatever. Go up to them, shake their hand, and thank them for their service. Thank them for what they do for you. Okay, let's get back, sorry. 
but uh, it was it, it felt that kind of we lost we lost a little bit of touch of if you know some of our uh, values here in the country. Today I'm going to show you what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you uh, a lot of questions that I've been getting about the saddleman seat for the lowrider ST for the soft tails. I have two different models, two different seats, so I thought it would be a good idea to show you the difference between the two. One is going to be the Touring, the Saddleman Tourer with the backrest, with the step up design. And this has the tuck and roll, the tuck and roll uh, design here. With the tuck and roll step up non tourer. So, this is what this video is all about. Anyway, I'm going to put both, take both seats out and show you the differences so you can compare and decide, you know, because I got a lot of questions down by the comments, like what's the difference between the two? So I, I simply have one over here and one over there. So I'll put them one beside each other and you can see the difference. Let me take it out. I mean, let me take the seats out. You, you nasty, you. Okay, let me take the first one. First one out is pretty easy. I have it hanging over here. It's the it's the soft tail step up. Step up. Step up is the concept. The Saddleman step up is this concept of this kind of almost 90 degrees uh, lumbar support, like that. And the tuck and roll is pretty much the design of these tubes. I would call them. You see. So this is the step up tuck and roll for a low rider S, low rider ST, any soft tail pretty much. Let me put it down over here. My Harbor Freight Schmata, I call it. Schmata is a word in Polish, actually in, in Yiddish, the Jewish language. Schmata means like a piece of rag. So yeah, let me put, uh, let me put this one over here. So here you go, like I said, this is the tuck and roll, tuck and roll design the step up seat. Let me get the other one. The other one is actually on my bike, currently on my bike. This one has a backrest, as you can see. Take the backrest off, I'll put it there as well. And this one actually is locked with this, it's pretty much a Torx, okay? It's a Torx, it's uh, the Saddleman lock they call it, but it's all it is is a Torx. I have a little, they provide a little key over here that I always have on my keychain or in my bag over there and it's I think it's a T27 just to simply it makes life more difficult for a thief if somebody wants to steal the seat you know truthfully if somebody wants to steal or something they'll steal it but it's just if you're there are 10 different bikes 10 bikes all around you what does a, a thief usually take he takes the easiest target right he takes the easiest thing that he finds and if yours is locked down or bolted down, then he might just skip to the next bike. So this, this is the, let me put it over here, show you. This is the Saddleman Touring, Saddleman Tourer with a step up design. And this one also has a backrest that you've just seen before. Let me put the backrest on so you can see. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's uh, they've got a little adjustment over here, so you can have it forward or backward as much as you want. This is what it looks like. Great, great for long, long touring, long journeys. And if you notice the back, the second, the passenger, the pillion is much thicker, wider than what the other one has. Great for uh, the significant other to be riding with you. Now let me put them one beside each other and we can actually compare. Start by just showing you an overview, one compared to the other, side by side with the backrest and I'll take, then I'll take the backrest off. This is what it looks like, one near the other. Now let me take the backrest off so you can compare. Put the backrest over here. Now look, pretty much 
they are, if you look at it from here, they're very much alike. Now you can see that the Touring one has the pillion, the pillion seat way wider. And when the step up, just this step up, step up, it's got, it's contoured, it's like, it's conical in the back, tapered. Let me show you from this side. You can see the step up. Standard step up and the touring, touring step up. Obviously, both designs have the tuck and roll, but you can actually choose different kinds, different kinds of finishes. You can have, for over here, for example, the back, I chose this flat, no stitching whatsoever. Here I have diamond stitching. You can also choose, you know, other stitching. You can choose different colors, different colors of uh, the logo, Saddleman logo, the actual stitches. You can have them in different colors. You can also have a different material. Here it's a different material. I forgot what it's called. It gives you a little bit more grip. Now let's see how wide, how wide each uh, seat is on the back. The rider is the same width, same, pretty much the same. Actually, it's exactly the same. Let me measure it. The Touring, the Touring is exactly, like I'll, I'll look at the back, is like 11 and a half inches. And the step up is also 11 and a half inches. So it's the same bucket, pretty much the same, the same design of uh, the rider uh, seat. And now let's check uh, the width, or let's see how high and how much padding each one has. I found a little uh, box over here to support the back. So what the back looks like, the comparison between the two. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna actually measure. So over here with the step up, it's pretty much, I would say six, oh, six at the widest. And with the touring, it's at nine and a half, nine and a half. So that is significantly bigger and way more comfortable, I would say, for the, for the pillion. Now let, let's see the, the height. You see as the, the two up, like the, the pillion seat, it tapers down a little bit. If you look at this one, at the touring, it does not. Let me go look at it from this side. From this side, it does not taper down. It's, it maintains pretty much the same height, the same height as, as uh, in the beginning. Here and here are the same height. It does not taper down. And the drop at the end is, is a steeper drop. There's like full height from here to here as there is from here to here. Whereas on the other seat, this height right from here to here is way bigger than here to here. So uh, you can definitely see that the seat, the touring seat, the touring seat has the comfort of uh, the passenger in mind, obviously. And most important, and I didn't even talk about this yet, is, is this, the adjustable backrest so that is the comparison between the two i also got some comments from people saying hey i wish saddleman would actually make a step-up seat which is you know mainly the step-up seat is mainly for the good looks because that seat really looks good and uh, less takes into, less takes into uh, consideration the, the pillion, the passenger that it's gonna be with you. But a lot of people said, hey, you know what? I'm at that age where I can definitely enjoy riding by myself with that beautiful seat, the step-up seat, but why don't they have a backrest like the touring one does? So believe it or not, I'm, talking to Saddleman 
and maybe we'll be able to figure something out so we can have that option. Because I can tell you, if they make a seat that has that option, I'm definitely gonna get that one. The step up, the nice, the good looking step up one with the contour in the back, with the backrest. That will be, that will be the perfect seat for me. See, because most of the time I do not ride two up. I ride, like not most of the time, I only ride one up. So for me, that would be the perfect seat. The great looks, the great looks of the step up with a backrest. Doesn't he have to be that size backrest? And I know they do have, they do have a design, the SDC, the Saddleman SDC, but that backrest is kind of small and it sticks into here, goes into here. And I didn't find that too comfortable for me and it wasn't adjustable. So if they could have something that would be smaller, it can be even smaller than this, because all you pretty much need, you don't really relax, it's not a recliner. You just need something to lay down, lay back a little bit and relieve uh, the, you know, the tension and let your back become part of the bike so you can actually control the bike a little bit. That's one of the control surfaces. I think that would be a great, great, great option. So this is what it looks like. Hope it comes, hope it comes out okay. If I get a good view of what it looks like. Each seed is obviously customizable. So let me summarize what we have over here. The two seats, one is, both have the same comfort level for the, for the uh, rider. One has the additional comfort of a backrest and also the pillion. The passenger is way more padded and wider, really made for a person that's gonna be riding two up and then one up and likes a backrest. This is the actually the seat, the touring seat is the seat that I'm gonna be taking with me on my trip, on the road trip with John, cross country trip. The other seat is good for somebody that rides mainly solo, every once in a while wants to take uh, a passenger with him and I think the looks are much better not much better but the looks are better with uh, the step up for the soft tail by the way I have links below by the description area you know click the description you'll see I'll put the links to both seats where you can pick them up and you can actually decide when you uh, pick up that seat uh, what stitching you want what design you want hope you have a good day a good weekend Remember those that sacrificed. These are the two seats, the Saddleman seat. I'm Sandy, a short one. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you found something informative. Appreciate if you're not subscribed, to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed it, give us a little, you know, thumbs up over there. I'm Sandy, you're watching Holy Shift. Till the next video, guys. Peace out. Oh, and to those of you that do vlogging and stuff and, you know, enjoy uh, photography, I was using actually the DJ, I, I, I do all my recording on DJI Action 4, which I love. And I just picked up this, this Ulanzi. I'll also have a link for it at the, at the bottom. What's nice about it, look, it's like very long uh, selfie stick and it's a hand grip and then it turns, it becomes, it becomes like a, a tripod and it's got a quick, quick connect over here. So like, bang, it's connected. Really cool. Bye. By the way, I forgot, I forgot to ask. If you think it's a good idea to do, to create this, the step-up seat, step-up seat with a backrest, just write a comment at the bottom saying, yeah, give us, give us a backrest on the step-up, please. And maybe Saddleman will see it and will decide that it's worth, uh, you know, I think it's easy for them to do. I don't know, like I have no clue what the, you know, the R&D, research and development uh, amounts to for coming up with the proper seat. But I, I would believe that if this uh, seat pan is kind of close and very much like that one, then it's doable. But maybe they, they're saying there's not a big enough market that would want it. So I don't know if you do think you would like to have one, uh, a step up seat like this one, the cool one with the backrest, 
just write down in the comments. Let's see if Saddleman can hear. And, you know, I know they do look at comments and they do, uh, they are responsive to, you know, to uh, viewers and to uh, comments and stuff like that. So if maybe if they see enough, I'm not putting them on the spot at all because I actually did talk to one of their PR guys. I spoke with Buster. Buster is their PR guy. And I was actually talking to him about this. We said we'll talk about it later and decide. But if, if we get enough people wanting it, maybe they'll make one. Sounds like a great idea, especially because it's my idea. Okay, bye. Now let's put it in place. I'll put the nicer one on. Yeah, it is a nicer one, I, no, no doubt. I think. And so it's on. This one is on the wall. And I'm out. Yeah, I do clean up after myself, but the problem is after I remember at the end of the video. My daughter had a party here. So, now I'm really out, bye.